Hello, welcome to this Five Cent Andrews Hill video. I'm John Oliver, and with me I have um, Alexander Wilson. Who Hello. Just with us. Hello. And uh, Georgia Beatty. Hello. Both of whom were pupils at Five Cent Andrews Hill before they took tenancy a couple of years ago. Um, can I start with you, Georgia? Can you just talk to us a little bit about uh, what you did prior to pupillage? What was your route to the bar? Sure. So um, I actually came to the bar straight from university, which I think is becoming less common these days. Uh, I did a law degree, so I didn't do the GDL um, and then went straight to the bar course after that. I got pupillage while I was on the bar course, so I kind of had a spare year uh, and I used that to go and do a master's in the Netherlands, not for any particular reason other than I wanted to do it. Um, so that's my quite an interesting route to the bar, I think. And um, what about you, Alex? Thanks, John. So I didn't do a law degree. I did a PPE, philosophy, politics and economics. And then I did do the GDR, <laughs> my daughter, Georgia. It's called you the wrong name there, Georgia. Um, <laughs> um, um, yeah, so I did the GDL and I got pupillage while I was on the GDL. So I then did my bar course in between and then came straight into pupillage. So similarly to Georgia, ran through education, um, but yeah, didn't have a, a year out. Is it fair to say in some respects your experiences were a bit unusual in that you were able to secure pupillage fairly early on in the process? Yeah, I think I would definitely say that. I'm sure Georgia would agree, Georgia. Um, yeah, I, I think it really depends. But I think increasingly people are maybe taking time before they apply to pupillage um, just to go and paralegal somewhere or get some experience, which definitely has its merits as an approach. Um, I think something that I missed going straight through from university is having the practical experience behind me to give me the confidence in court. Um, and I think a lot, uh, you know, plenty of people are doing that these days. And, and I, I think that's maybe something that's a, a good idea um, if you're able to do that. That said, you know, <laughs> we managed to get where we are. So <laughs> without uh, just going, you know, just through going straight from uni. So um, I guess you could do it either way. I, I know some people, um, I know this from previous pupillage fairs and, and interviews and, and various things, that some people are reluctant to start the bar course before they've secured pupillage because of the cost of the bar course. Is that something that either of you considered? I certainly did. Um, so that's so I, that's why I applied in my GDL year, um, because I knew that the cost was ridiculous of the bar course. Um, and I didn't want to put that kind of investment. I didn't, to be frank, I didn't want to pay for that huge course if I wasn't going to get privilege. Um, and so I, and I, at that point, I didn't have a clue as to whether or not you know, I'd be deemed good enough. Obviously, there's all these kind of preconceptions about what the bar is like. Um, and so for me, it was quite important. I mean, had I not got pupillage in my um, GDL year, would I have still done the bar course the next year? It's really difficult to say. I mean, I, I think it's very dependent on things like scholarships. Um, you know, in the end, I got a scholarship, so I probably would have done it. But had I not, I don't, I don't know. So I can completely understand why people want to wait and people reapply. Um, I don't think that's a... I don't think that's something that will be held against you because ultimately I think we all appreciate that it's a really expensive profession to break into. And, you know, you don't have to come straight out of university as George has already said, and I'm sure John would say too, you know, you can take your time and get in here. Um, we will appreciate it's too expensive. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree that the cost can be uh, prohibitive um, and scholarships are, are, insanely helpful for anyone who doesn't have the money to, to fund the course themselves um certainly without those scholarships being available um there are plenty of people who wouldn't be able to join the profession in the first place so yeah it, it's it's absolutely a concern um and another reason why maybe working beforehand for a few years to to accrue savings um could be a a, a helpful way of, of managing that I, I know as a member of the pupillage committee it's certainly something that we never hold against somebody what we look for is excellent in, in candidates and if that can be demonstrated from an early stage then they have as much chance as anyone else. Um, were there any particular reasons, um, I'll start with Georgia, um, why you applied to Five St Andrews Hill when you did? Um, yeah I, it was mostly chambers practice areas actually. Uh, I really wanted to build an extradition practice and Five St Andrews Hill has 
um, a, a very good sort of extradition team uh, and a lot of extradition work. Uh, so that was something that really drew me to, to this chambers over other chambers because it's it's quite a niche area. Um, and then I came for my first interview and everyone was lovely, <laughs> which uh, really cemented my sort of desire to, to be here above anywhere else. And, and it's fair to say that although it's a, a criminal pupillage and it's advertised as such, there are opportunities during pupillage to delve into other areas of law and extradition is one of the big ones. Um, is, that, is that something that you did when you were during pupillage? Yes, um, I would say it was. there was a split in my second six between uh, crime, family and extradition. Uh, probably about 70% of the work that I was doing was crime, but there was also a significant uh, family and, and extradition element. And since I've become a tenant, I've been able to kind of explore other areas that I might want to develop practice in, and there's been opportunities to do that. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, although it's advertised as a criminal pupillage, it doesn't have to be only a criminal pupillage. Yeah. Uh, and what about you, Alex? What, what in particular drew you to Five St Andrews Hill? Um, being completely honest, it was the money. Um, <laughs> Five St Andrews Hill offered a very generous um, pupillage award. And for me, money was pretty important coming to the criminal bar. Um, you know, I know London's expensive, full stop. But also, um, I wanted to be at a chambers where I knew that they could sustain themselves and that they could afford to pay pupils a decent amount of money. For me, that was a sign that they were getting good work um, and hopefully it was, you know, somewhere I could build my practice. So when I was deciding where to apply, I literally ranked criminal chambers by how much people is and what they were paying. <laughs> and I went for the top ones. Um, yeah, in my, when, when Georgia and I applied, the minimum was 12,000. So obviously there were some that were really, really low that for me was just not affordable. Um, so that's why I did it like that. Yeah, I can understand that. And the award, I think, is probably similar to the one you got for the, the first, although the pupillage itself is split into three separate um, pupil supervisors. The first six months has, has a £20,000 award uh, and then guaranteed earnings, I think, of 17500 or 15000 actually, 15000 in the second six. Uh, so, yes, we're... we're, we're, we're it has it gone up? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 50,000, yeah. That, that's a really good... For, for a criminal set, it's a really good amount of money. Um, in, in terms of that second six, did you find that you met... Because it'd been a guaranteed earning, of course, if you earn more than that, you keep anything above, above and beyond that £15,000. Did you find that you were earning more than that anyway in your second six, both of you? Yeah, I certainly did. Um, so... Yeah, that was a positive. It meant, it meant that, you know, it made sense as to why Chambers were paying what they were paying. You know, we were earning an excess of that, which is a good indicator. Is that true for you as well, Georgia? Um, to a degree, yeah. I think for the first maybe four months or so, I was receiving my guaranteed earnings, but of a less and less proportion each month. So obviously the first month I was receiving almost all of the amount that Chambers would pay because I hadn't filled any, any um, hours yet. But as the as the months progressed, the proportion that Chambers would have to pay me grew smaller and smaller. And then I think about month five, maybe six, I was starting to earn over the top of that. Um, and that has carried on into tenancy as well. So, the, the you know, the work has been coming through and I've been earning um, increasingly more since then, which is, you know, always good for financial security. Yeah. Um, before we move on to what, how your practices have evol evolved as you got into chambers, it's probably um, a good moment for me to just mention alternative routes. Um, most people, of course, will do it in the way that you both did by the studying law degree or doing a conversion course before bar school and, and straight into the profession. But there may be some people who do or did what I did, uh, which, well, I was called to the bar, then I qualified as a solicitor. Uh, and then cross back to the bar with an exemption from pupillage. Um, but that was on, on the basis of the experience that I gained as a solicitor advocate, um, particularly in the Crown Court. Um, but of course, there, there will be some people who are considering applying who um, have a partial exemption from pupillage and, and are required to do um, six months or, or even a full 12 month pupillage. And I think that's sometimes the case for international uh, or foreign qualified uh, lawyers. Uh, but that is a route that's still available. And, and of course, um, Chambers does consider applications from anyone who, who um, needs that sort of um, period of pupillage to satisfy the Bar Council. Um, 
Moving on to your practice since you became a lieutenant, George, you've already touched on the fact that you you did some ex- extradition work, uh, but your interest in chambers was principally that we had an extradition practice and quite a, a well known one. Um, what about after the, after you took tenancy? Um, how has it evolved? Yeah, um, I've been able to develop my extradition practice, uh, which has been really good. Uh, I'm currently seconded to the CPS extradition units, and I'm hoping to continue that side of my practice after I leave. Um, Ideally for me, I would like to balance a crime and an extradition practice. And that seems something that's very possible at Chambers. Um, A few junior members of Chambers are doing exactly that, which is really really encouraging to see. Um, And yeah, it's, I I feel that the clerks have been really supportive in terms of um, helping me find work in this area and and develop my practice in in what I've, as I've said before, is quite a niche area of law. Um, There are certainly those opportunities there. No, of course, we, we take pupils with a view to tenancy and we have a pretty good track record of taking on um, our pupils. Um, and so some people apply and will have a view to what happens in, in those early years. And you've mentioned the secondment that you're doing now. Um, it's fair to say there are, there are lots of opportunities for secondment. Is, is that right? Have you seen other types and other areas that you could have done a secondment, for example? Absolutely, yeah. Um, junior tenants sort of have spoken to me about various different secondments that they're doing with different agencies. Um, I gather that there was uh, one of our junior tenants was involved in an NCA secondment recently. I also did a um, disclosure review at a solicitor's, a solicitor's firm um, a few months back as well. So there's a lot of different um, opportunities for secondments in particular, um, and also just in, in general in terms of new work and, and new areas. So partly down to the relationships I think that Chambers already has with various, what you mentioned, the Serious Fraud Office, but also I think the Crime Prosecution Service um, as well, uh, amongst mm. others. Um, and Alex, what about you? Have you stuck to what you did during pupillage or have you moved into other areas as well? So during pupillage, I did a mix of crime, family and extradition. Uh, now in my practice, I just do family and crime. I do about about 50% of each. Uh, the clerks were really flexible. I decided that I didn't really want to go anywhere with extradition and, and that was fine. So I think what's really good about as soon as you become a tenant at Five St Andrews Hill, the clerks very much are, you know, listen to what you, you want to do, which I think is really important in any chambers. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll ask you both in, in turn, but was there anything in particular that you thought, either during your pupillage or early years of tenancy, that set Fives and Andrews Hill apart from other sets of chambers? Anything about the atmosphere, the work, practice areas, anything at all you can think of that you thought um, either drew to chambers or made you fall in love with it and stay? Uh, uh, go, Georgia. Um, yeah, I've already touched on chambers practice areas, which I think is uh, quite a unique uh, and like a unique blend of practice areas, really, uh, for chambers to have, which is what drew me to Five St Andrews Hill in the first place. Um, but certainly, in terms of staying here, it's it's been the atmosphere and the people. Um, everyone has been incredibly supportive, especially the junior tenants. There's you know like a a real nice sense of camaraderie. Uh, there's always someone at the end of the phone if you need them. Um, it just feels very relaxed uh, and a nice, a really nice place to be. A junior practitioner kind of finding their feet. Yeah and and I think um, some junior members I don't know if you're amongst them but are involved in a mentoring scheme during the first years of practice as well is that something you both do? Uh, yeah I, I think both of us do and and personally I've found it really helpful. Uh, and what about you Alex was there anything you thought set for St Andrews Hill in the past or, or made you stay? Yeah I mean building on what George has said I think that the atmosphere makes a huge difference. You know, there's so many WhatsApp groups. There's like the members WhatsApp groups. There's like junior WhatsApp WhatsApp groups. There's like specific area practice WhatsApp groups. And those WhatsApp groups actually make a huge difference because you can just pop a question in there. You know, people can reply almost instantly. Um, people can give you a call if you need a bit more help. It's really nice to know that there are, there are always people, as Georgia said, you know, at the end of the phone. That makes a really big difference. And I don't think every chambers has that. Um, I'd also say the mentoring scheme is really helpful. My mentor has made a big difference. You know, as I was breaking into a new area of law, matrimonial finance, which I hadn't done at all in pupillage, I'd never really seen it. It was really good to have a mentor who could guide me through it and took the time to do that. So that even when I was doing my first few cases, you know, she would sit on the end of the phone and, and talk me through it and look through my papers with me. And it really made a huge difference. 
So yeah, I think that's something that really stands out about Barton and Andrew's film. Excellent. And, and, and I know we've um, touched on what happens once you've achieved tenancy, um, but of course, during the course of the pupillage, it, it's probably fair to say that there's support as well, not just from pupil supervisors, but other people in chambers are generally accessible to help and, and answer questions, um, particularly if you're doing work for them during the course of your pupillage. Um, but um, obviously, again, I mentioned that because uh, we do recruit pupils with a view to tenancy, so that is possibly something that people have want to take into account. Um, well, thank you to anyone who's watched this. Thank you to Georgia and to Alex for taking part and taking your time to tell us a little bit about your experiences. And we look forward to welcoming applications from um, anyone who's interested in pupillage at Fire St Andrews Hill. And I may see some of you during interviews. Thanks.